is the mouse that I currently use for DDO and I'm going to show you my hotbars and my key mapping. Um, so first of all, um, I do have all 20 hotbars out. Do I have them all key mapped? No. Uh, for those of you who don't know what key maps are, is you can give any position on um, DDO has the first 10 hot bars. So they're numbered right through here 1 through 4, 5 through 8, 6, or 9, 10. So the first 10, and I'll show you later, you can actually put key binds to. So, like, let's say you wanted hot bar number 1, um, number 1 up here to be the R key so every time you hit R you use this you could do that so they're very handy to customize um, so the mouse that I am currently using is a Logitech G600 which I said in some of my other videos which I am going to show you guys that now, what it looks like. So, here is the Logitech mouse that I am using. This is the software um, that I can do some keybinds on the mouse um, in the mouse program. Um, I currently use onboard memory, so the mouse has memory built inside, so that way if I unplug it and go to another computer, I can have the same settings saved on my mouse as the other computers. Or, if you wanted to, you can change it and save the settings on the computer. I personally like doing the onboard. That way I always have it if I you know, change computers or do anything with my computer and it wipes, I have all the information still that I want at the same settings. So down here, it's still loading a little slow, is the top view of the mouse. This is the side view that your thumb goes on all these buttons. So with this mouse, what I feel makes it so unique is the third button called G shift so you have your left click button your right click and now a G shift that my ring finger rests on um, and with that I want to say I feel this mouse is extremely comfortable it's a little bit bigger of a mouse, but your hand just kind of rests right over it and just kind of relaxes right into place on it. Um, my two other brothers have the same exact mouse. All three of us swear by it. If this mouse ever goes on me or buttons break on it, whatever, I would hope to find another one of the exact same mouse. I would be willing to pay over 100 bucks for the thing. It's an amazing mouse. So, let's start with some of the buttons, show you what they are. So this one here is called G9, G10, G11, goes right up on through, all the way to G20. On top here you got this nice little G8 button. You have G7. You have your mouse click wheel with the scroll up and down. And then you have, if you were to push the scroll wheel over to the right, or over to the left. Um, so I customized these buttons. I believe it came factory, um, I want to say it was not this, I forget what it was exactly, but... Uh, like this button, for instance, I have it set to number one. So let's look back down here. So if I just hit number one, right there says number one, I'm going to use a 
lay on or healing hands. There you go. So I just clicked that button. Did it again. Now if we go back over here, number two. It's gonna be number two. So now I'll do it on the mouse. There you go. So I think the rest of that's kind of self-explanatory. Um, I use O for my, well, basically I do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then 0 here. So that will be a full hot bar. Then I have two extra keys. The one I use is auto run, R. The other one I use is O, which is my social panel. Um, C is your uh, character sheet. I is inventory. Backspace, which I'll show you guys later, I have that um, set up in DDO as a modifier, which I'll show you what I did in a little bit. Spacebar, because I like to jump. So I have auto run, jump, my attacks, my hot bars. So theoretically, I could just play with my right hand if I wanted to. If I needed to get a drink, if I wanted to, you know, do whatever, um, I can just play one-handed. Let's say you got a problem with your left hand, you know, you like to use just your right hand, but you don't want to use a keyboard, you want to find a mouse, it's a great mouse. With that being said, if you were left-handed, it'd be a little difficult to use this mouse. Now, G-Shift, you have Normal and G-Shift. So anytime I hold down this G-Shift button, you'll notice all these keys change, or I should say most of them. So there you go. So when I hold down this G-Shift and I hit this G9 button, it's like me pressing on the keyboard Control F1. So right here you can kind of see it. it says control plus F1 it's kind of squeezed in there so if I were to hold my G shift which I'm about to do and then hit that G9 button there you go it uses it so I have that set up the same way as far as my hot bars that are 1 through 0. So everything I try to keep the same and in line. So that way if I look at my hot bars, I can say, all right, I know right where the buttons are. It's kind of the muscle memory. Keeping it all the same makes it a lot easier. Um, then I have this set as backspace, which is this button up here. It's just whatever is easier for me to press. Um, I currently, I don't think I use that one right now. I could probably unassign it or assign it to something else, but I'll just leave it for now. F1, that is to target myself because I am all the time trying to target myself, heal myself, buff myself, whatever. So um, let's say I was getting a drink of water or something and uh, I'm entered a quest and wanted a buff, quickly hit it. Yes, it might save a half a second, but I'm all about trying to save time. Um, back button 4, forward button 5. Uh, I don't use those two. I don't know exactly what they are off the top of my head. You know what I use them for? Yeah, back and forward. Um, I believe for web browsing. But uh, anyways, uh, spacebar, yet again, if I'm holding G-Shift and hit that, I can jump. Um, backspace. Like I said earlier, I don't use this one. I use that one. So there's the G-Shift button. So when I'm holding this button down, that's what all these keys will do. Oh, if I'm not holding G-Shift down, they do this. So now... Um, 
I want to explain a little bit about my hand. I know it kind of sounds funny, but uh, I wear normally a medium men's glove. My hand's kind of small. My hand fits perfect on this mouse. Um, one of my other brothers, I won't give their character name or real name because I don't want to embarrass them. <laughs> it's probably not embarrassing, but they have a really big hand. I would say their size is probably an extra large men's. Um, and he finds it very comfortable, the most comfortable mouse he put his hands on. So wide variety of sizes of hands, it's still a great mouse. Am I advertising for Logitech? No, but for DDO, I feel this is the perfect mouse. I've tried numerous of ones, and for me personally, this works great. Um, real quick, I didn't explain this. So I can customize the mouse even more. There's different modes. Uh, I believe G8 started off as a mode button. So every time you hit the button, it cycles through the mode. So then it would go to this mode, and then it would go to this mode, and then you have to hit it again to go back to your normal. I didn't like that because if I was in a different mode, like let's say this normal mode, this one button here has my main heel. I hit the that select mode button, I go here, now it changes to something else. So to get back to my heel, I can't just hit it one more time. I have to hit it two times. Or vice versa, since this one was one over here. You know, if I wanted to get over here real quick and I was here, I'd have to hit it three times. It, was, it made it real difficult to remember, so I just left that out of the equation. I always keep my mode in here. I don't have any buttons as mode. I'll show you real quick how to change the buttons. You hit the little drop-down arrows. So on G8, hit the drop down, I'm going to edit. Then right here, if you click on this bar, and then you just hit space bar, it types in space. Then you hit OK. If you want to do like Control F1, you hit here, you hit con or hold Control, hit F1. And then hit OK, and it would save it. You could also have the the ones that they suggest right here. You can just click on the bullet and hit OK if you wanted to. So, mouse function. Mode switch. That's what I was talking about. That cycles through the mode. Oh, you guys can't see that. Hmm, give me a second. Let me uh, see if I can open that up real quick. Just a minute. There we go. Sorry about that. So what I've shown here is this is where you click, you you hit space bar, then you hit OK down here. These are all the pre-selected ones. Um, now if you go to mouse function, there is mode switch right there. So that's how you would do that. So you could have these functions act on any button you want to program. So like for instance right here, number one, if I go to edit, try that again. There we go. If I go to edit, sorry I was holding the F button. So now I have two here and two there, but I don't want to do that. I want to put it to one.
So there is the one. Okay, um, next thing about the mouse, and I'll get into the hot bars in just a few minutes here. Um, so you have your DPI sensitivity levels. I keep it about 3,250. Um, you can go all the way up to 8,200, which is crazy fast. A little too fast for me. I'm barely even moving my hand. I can't even click. So that's a lot better. Um, and yet again, if you use the mode selection, you can change your DPIs on the mode. Um, you can go to color. You can change your DPIs here on your color. And you can see the buttons here changing the color of the wheel here. And you can select you got all different customizing effects. So if I were to do cycle lighting, it's like a rainbow, pulse lighting, it kind of fades in and out. Or just uncheck it and the light's on all the time. So that pretty much sums up my mouse and how I have my mouse set up. Now we can get in game and I can show you that. So let me open up the options here. Go to key mapping. So, like I was showing you earlier, modifier key is backspace. Um, I accidentally closed the window and didn't want to close it. So, anytime I hit the backspace key here, give me just a second, I want to shift that window over a little. There we go. Anytime I use the Backspace, which is right here, and I have it in G Shift right there too. So I will show you why I have it in G Shift in a little while. But I have them both set right there as backspace. That's my modifier key. So on my hot bars, which hot bars are way down. Um, let's start off with shortcut bar or hot bar number one slot one so that's right here it's just standard what DDO set to one through nine then zero so one through zero so I don't have any key binds on them because they're the normal ones now shortcut bar two slot one this is shortcut bar two slot one these are all ones these are all twos threes so on and so forth with all the hot bar and these vertical ones, you have one, two, three, four, so on and so forth. So with modifier plus one. So anytime I hold backspace and hit one, I'm going to use this, which I'm not going to do because it's my gold seal pot. So I'll do number two. Hot bar two, slot two, right here. Backspace, my modifier plus two, we'll use that. So right now I'm gonna hold the center button in and I'm gonna hit this button right here on my mouse, or excuse me, two, that button on my mouse. And you can see the time went down on it. You see it above my head, the bigger. So that's why I programmed on the mouse the backspace here. And I have my modifier is backspace, so that's how I got to that.
So um, you can go through uh, hop R2 is just that one through zero backspace on all of them. So I could also, if I wanted to, hold backspace on my keyboard and hit two, which I just did right there. So I don't have to use a mouse. You could use it on the keyboard either or. Uh, I always use it on the mouse though. Um, so now hot bar number three, which this one's number three, is going to be control plus F2. So now on my G shift, I have these programmed control F1 through F10, so F9, F10. So you can see how that works. So when I hold G shift down and I hit F1, or con control F1, it does this. Use the winner heart. So my third hot bar is all control plus F1 through 10. So you could do it on the keyboard too. And it works that way as well. So that's how I get my third hot bar. So basically I have an an order here. My first hot bar I can use just my normal thumb buttons here for my first hot bar. My second hot bar I have to hold the backspace down and then use my thumb buttons. My third hot bar, I have to hold G shift down and then use the thumb buttons. So, now, um, fourth hot bar, I got some other stuff, we'll get back to that. And eighth hot bar is something a little different, we'll get back to that. So my five through seven is gonna be the same thing Number five is going to be just my thumb button. Number six is going to be just backspace in my thumb button. Number seven is going to be just G shift with my thumb buttons. But there's another thing that's in play there. As you can see, they all say shift. Kind of, sort of. So let's go down to hot bar five. So I have shift plus one. So if I hold shift with my left pinky on my keyboard, which is normally block, I did change that and I'll show. So to use my sixth hot bar, it's gonna be my modifier plus shift in one. So with that, my modifier, if you remember, is backspace. Backspace is the G7 right here. Shift I hold with my pinky. So it gets a little more complicated, but once you get down, do it a few times, or run for a couple hours or whatever, you get pretty, I get pretty used to it, I should say. I shouldn't say you. Um, I do. Uh, I don't think it's that bad. So there we go. I got the uh, electrical resist. Now number seven hot bar, if I want to go into wolf form, same deal. Remember these are all shift, these three hot bars, five, six, sevens. As you see right here, it's control plus shift plus F1. Over here, my G shift is control plus F1. So I have the controls and I have F1, but I gotta add shift in the mix with my pinky. S, that's three buttons at once I gotta press. 
it is a lot of buttons. It's not everybody's playing style. Um, it's just something I've acquired recently and, and I love doing. I used to always run with just three hot bars programmed on the mouse, number one, two, and three. It was never enough for me. So I had to find a new way to acquire a few more in there. Um, probably, realistically, probably about five, maybe six hot bars being key mapped would be great for me. I went ahead and did all ten. Do I use them all the time? No. Do I use them? Yes, but not all the time. Okay, so next, I'm going to still leave 4 and 8 out right now. We'll get back to those. Number 9 and 10. We'll scroll down here on the options. So the most you can key map is shortcut par or hot bar number 10. Then you can also do higher bars. So I was a little disappointed. It would have been nice if I could have done all 20 because maybe I wanted, you know, my stances over here to be key mapped. But in order to do that, now I'm going to have to bring them down over here or over in 1 through 10. But I want my potions all to be here. It'd be nice if it was a little more versatile. If you could have the option to key map all 20, but you don't. So let's go to hot bar 9 right here. So this one is control plus 1. I currently do not have control on my mouse other than the control plus F1s on my G-Shift. Other than that, I don't. Might I change it at a later date? I might. But for now, I'm going to leave it as is. It works pretty good. So unlike these three, five, six, seven with shift, the next one over, move my pinky down just a little more, is control. And that is control as well. So uh, shortcut bar number nine, hot bar number nine, is just hold control. And I'm not going to do it. I'm going to do number eight. Um, so everybody can see, because I'm not using my Supreme Ability Elixirs. Not now, anyways. So, I hold... ...in the G16 is F8. Excuse me. Back to normal mode. G16... Right there is 8. Modifiers, backspace. Backspace is my middle button here. So, which is right here. See, I messed up, did the wrong one. I did. I didn't hold the back. Occasionally I do mess up like that, you'll notice it, and I usually call it out, which is an odd thing. But, uh, so that's kind of how I have them set up. So everything here is just with my mouse. These three here, I have to hold shift with my left hand on the keyboard. These two here, I have to hold control with my left hand on the keyboard. The top rows are just my thumb buttons. The second row down is the center backspace button, which is my modifier. Which, as you recall up here, I have my modifier, key modifier, backspace. And then the third row on hot bars 3 and 7 is my G shift button. So this one here would be G shift plus my thumbs. This one here would be G shift plus shift on my left hand on my keyboard plus my thumb button. So that's how I have those set up. Now, um, block shift. I changed that. So let's scroll down and uh, I'll show you guys what I changed it to. 
forget exactly where it is. Here it is. Block attack. I changed it to V. I like V. It's right there. I'm holding F all the time. Right now I'm holding F. I use that to talk. F. So I hold V as well and I can block. You guys with a shield equipped. I'm holding shit right now. Nothing's happening. I'm holding V, blocking. Okay. So, another thing that I didn't know, I'm going to show you in key mapping, which I'm glad I looked at it before I started setting my key binds because it was really. Um, took some time to get it back. It, it did take me a long time to figure this out and get it all kind of situated the way I have it now. Um, you have different styles. You have default, FPS, and classic. Um, I forget exactly which one I clicked on. I want to say it was classic it might be FPS. I'm pretty sure it was not default, but I will scroll down the list and show you guys slowly what I have everything set to. Um, and if anybody has any questions, feel free to send me a comment, telling game, anything. I'm fine with that. So when you click on one of these, it changes your key mapping. So if you have your key mapping all set, never ever click on one of these because then you're gonna have to redo it all so I'm gonna slowly scroll down so everybody can see what I have everything set to um, button zero is your left click with your pointer finger button one is your right click Button 2 is your mouse wheel click. So, this is an interesting one. This one took me a little bit to figure out. So, if I'm running somewhere and I'm holding down my control button because I'm about to cast a potion over here on my 9 and 10, which I'll use control you stop running. So what I did is I put in, I had the W as my normal forward, and I added a control W. So when I'm always running, if I use a potion, I will still be running. That's another reason why I have block and shift on something else, something different. So same thing with moving backwards, turning right, turning left. Same thing with jump. Auto run is R, mouse look is T, camera zoom because, oh, I never went up over hot bar 4 and 8. I will get to that as we're scrolling down. Um, to zoom the camera in and out, if you ever want to look at something you could use those um, I don't use them for anything else um, so that's why I selected those uh, I'm not gonna read them all off but I'm just gonna slowly scroll down I believe I changed floaty names too. There's that block again. Uh, I did have V as the rune arm before, but uh, I, I put it back to left alt. I do like artificers too. Probably my third favorite class at the moment. Behind uh, Warlock and then Druid. So that right there is a uh, 
forget what button it is. It's somewhere on my keyboard. There's my push to talk. And I love that. A lot of people don't know, but that loot all B, I believe that's a standard across the board. Um, I use that one all the time. It's really nice. Makes things a lot quicker. So you can scroll through uh, weapon sets. So if you have different weapon sets, you can go one way or the other. Um, thought I was going to use it. I haven't used it yet. I mean, I tried it and things, but um, I'll show you. I have weapon sets down here. I'll show you in a minute how I do it. It might be nice for a tune that only has two weapon sets or um, whatever. Might be nice for a tune with multiple. It just depends on how you play. So I always select myself as F1 in the parties. Uh, that's just, just me. I, I like using the F keys. I've gotten really used to not even looking down at my mouse or keyboard for any of this stuff. Um, my pet here. So I target my pet. It's right next to 1. That's the key that I'm using to the left of 1, right below escape. So it's a tiny bit of a stretch, but it's still right there. Because I like to heal him here and there. Not all the time. I let him die sometimes. Um, I just never took those off. They were all key bind. I, I removed them. I used them on something else. Which, if you have... That brings up another point. If you have um, control plus F11, you want to use it on something else. And you click, let's say, previous shortcut bar. I were to click on that and hit hold control and hit F11, it would disappear here and reappear here. So that's another thing. When you key map, be real careful what you're doing because you can wipe what was there before, which will make it difficult if you weren't sure exactly what it was or where it is in the list. It's a long list here to find it, to put it back. So right here, shortcut bars. Shortcut bar one to select that, which I always have that one selected. So every once in a while, uh, that brings up a good point because I think Kimi did this uh, last night or two nights ago. Every once in a while, you'll be thumbing around, moving hot bars, whatever, clicking on a hot bar, and you'll have a different hot bar selected. So most people, every single hot bar, one through twenty, is numbered one through zero. If you were to select, let's say, hot bar 5 and click on it, and that one was the highlighted bar, it kind of makes that your main bar. So what I like to do is always have my bar 1 as my main. Some people don't, but to get back to that, you want to have a key, whatever the key is, you want to have a key to get back to that hot bar. So mine is on my noom pad, and it's the star button. Or the times button, right above 9. So I hit that and it brings me back to that hot bar 1. So I showed you guys my hot bar 2, 3. I'm going to go to 4 now. I'll show you what I did here. So hot bar 4, number 1. These are my buffs. These are well, or as well are buffs. Plus, I have a couple weapon sets here. Uh, I no longer use these two. I just use the one. So when I equip the wand or scroll and want to get back, I use that one key. So I start with insert right here. Then I go right across, go to home, right next to home. I go page up. Then I drop below the insert, delete, and page down. This is the up arrow, the left arrow, the down arrow, the right arrow. So all right there on that hot bar is just like reading a book on your keyboard. I just go right across for buffs. Insert, 
I have a buff. It's Springs Resurgence. It only lasts for five minutes, and it's really nice. You guys can read that. It's really nice to cast on everybody. Um, so I have that on an easy key to reach without even looking at my keyboard. I'll take my hand off my mouse, and I'll go over and hit Insert. I'll hit, like, F1. I'll target myself, and then I'll hit Insert. Or F2, target the next guy, hit Insert. Um, so I can go right through the buff list, list that way on that spell. That's a nice one to always keep on everybody in the party, especially people that aggro and take damage. Um, Druid only sp uh, spell. Uh, it's actually an enhancement. It's right here. And the only thing getting it multiple times, the only thing it does is lessens your cooldown and uh, lessens the activation cost. So I was going to only spend it once, but for time's sake, to make things quicker, I got it three times. I'm casting it all the time. You guys can watch in the videos. I call it flowers. It doesn't even have flowers. It's like weeds, but <laughs> I call it flowers. I don't know why. Okay, so that's my hot bar number four. That shows you that. And uh, for the Reaper charges, they're pretty important to have. Uh, as you notice, I don't use them as much as I should. Like if I'm running through traps here, this one gives me plus 9 to all my saving throws for 30 seconds. Um, so what I do is, it's the arrow keys, it's real easy, bottom of the keyboard. I mean, things at the edge of the keyboards is real easy to find without even taking your eyes off screen. So that's why I have them down on the bottom arrows. Now, keep going down. You've seen all the other hot bars except for number eight. So number eight, I use the numerical pad. So just like reading a book, number one. Here's number one. So that one is noom pad seven. So I start seven, eight, nine, four, five, six, one, two, three. Then the very last one, I do zero. It's a big button. I use it all the time. When I use a scroll, wand, anything, I use it all the time. Huge button, real easy to reach, real easy to hit. So those two there, those two bars are not on my mouse. Could I put them on my mouse? Could I move things around and figure it out? Sure, I could, but I don't want to. I think I figured it out. I could have like 130, 140 something keybinds on the mouse, but DD only allows 100 max for as far as um, buff bars, hot bars. So we'll keep going down. So what I did here, um, this is the. Uh, well, I'll show you. I'll activate my wolf. So this is the hireling bar one. So when you summon a hire, so I have a wolf right now. If I were to go on a quest and call a cleric or call somebody else, that would be hireling bar number two. So if I'm in quest, call a cleric, don't have my wolf out, call my wolf out, then that's going to be hireling bar two, the wolf. So it's the second one that I summon is number two. The first one you summon is number one. Um, slot six. So if you count over one, two, three, four, five, six, that's the use key. So I use that uh, more so in lower low B quests compared to higher heroics. Um, sometimes I don't run with the wolf in higher heroics. Um, I use that for him to buff on the one hour shrines on the ships to use doors, levers, things like that in quests right next to the enter key. It, it makes it pretty easy to me. Um, the center ship up, uh, button too. You use it, it turns to defend if you target some. If you don't target somebody, you use. Okay, uh, keep going down. I think I 
have just a couple more. So yeah, escape. Now, this was nice. I did this for... Um, what was it there? Crap, I forget. Something we were doing all the time. I thought it was Maybar. Yeah, I want to... Yeah, um... Oh, it's the one Minotaur quest there. You have to choose the second option. So, NPC dialogue. So, when you get a chat box that comes up, and normally most people spawn spam enter through it, um, well, you have a choice. If there's... You could choose up to, by the looks of it, ten choices. It's all the way down at the bottom. So, if a guy had five different choices in... Or, for instance, uh, I want to say, let me use this as an example. I want to say it is the Mind Flare over in, I'm horrible with names, sorry, guys. The level 17 quest there in the market. Sane Asylum, that's what it's called. So, for the optional, I believe it's choice number four to get the chest. So what you could do if you wanted to, you can choose that and you can hit a key in correlation that would then choose the fourth option. So you don't have to move your mouse over and actually click on it. Not a lot of people use this that I know of or that I've asked of, but um, I thought this was pretty handy doing a choice too. It's real close to my mouse. You know, just take my hand off. It's a big key. I hit the noon pad plus sign. Um, you have to choose the choice two to uh, proceed in that one minotaur for Maybar. So it's nice to choose. Sometimes you need need that anyways. Um, use it if you want. Use it if you don't. It's a little perk that I like. But I'm crazy because I have a lot of hot bars and a lot of stuff to remember. Most people would be like, that's ridiculous and way too much. Can it be too much and overwhelming? Oh, yeah. I get tired sometimes. I forget what I'm doing sometimes. But you'll notice because uh, as I'm running around questing, I usually call, crap, I hit the wrong key or something like that. Or, darn it, didn't mean to ca cast that spot. So yet again, there's there's the mouse Logitech uh, G600. Use the onboard memory. Here's uh, my key mapping, key binds for the mouse real quick. Let's, come on. There we go, it's loading. There's the G shift button. And there's all my hot bars. So if anybody has any questions, please send me a tell. Um, let me know. I hope this helped out some of you. Um, am I saying go out and get this mouse? No. Uh, am I saying use crap ton of hot bars and keybinds? No. But I know a lot of this, a lot of people don't use. And um, for me, in my playing style, it, it's helped a lot. Um, so if it's something that, uh, you always use one hot bar, but you want to use two hot bars, there gives you some of the options on some of the things I did. You could use that key modifier for a button that you never use. That's real easy to reach. Um, let's say you don't tab on guys or you don't use Q or E. Um, some people don't, if you don't, and you want to use that. Um, you could use that for a modifier, so you could hold Q and hit one, two, three, or or whatever. But uh, yeah. So, anyways, I I hope this helps some of you. Um, let me know, please comment, and uh, any questions, ask. Thank you, and have a good day.